Hello, I'm Sandra Freshney, and I'm the archivist at the Sedgwick Museum of Earth Sciences, and I'm delighted to be taking part in this year's History Day. Today, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the museum archives, but first, here's a quick video introducing you to the wonderful museums you can visit in Cambridge. The history of the University of Cambridge Museums stretches back to 1728 and the founding collection of what would eventually become the Sedgwick Museum of Earth Sciences. The University of Cambridge Museums, or UCM, is a consortium and works collaboratively to enable more people to enjoy and engage with the university's collections and scholarship. It represents the UK's highest concentration of internationally important collections outside London. These collections include more than 5 million works of art, artefacts and specimens from all the continents of the world. UCM is an Arts Council England funded national portfolio organisation and five of the museum's collections are designated as internationally significant. In terms of research, during 2021 to 2022, UCM responded to 2,723 research inquiries and facilitated over 1,000 research visits. So let's take a quick look at the museum collections before we look at the archives in a bit more detail. The Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology covers 2 million years of human history and has over a million artifacts, including the skeleton of a Roman woman who inspired Sylvia Plath's poem, All the Dead Deers. The Botanic Garden is a treasure trove of over 8,000 plant species. It includes nine national collections and a wonderful arboretum. Also located at the Botanic Garden site, at the Sainsbury Laboratory is the herbarium, which is embedded within the Department of Plant Sciences. The Museum of Classical Archaeology has one of the largest surviving collections of plaster casts of Greek and Roman statues in the world. There are 450 casts, including the bruised and battered Terme Boxer, also called the Boxer at Rest, who you can see here on the slide. The Fitzwilliam Museum houses over half a million objects, artifacts and art from around the world. You can see everything from Egyptian coffins to Impressionist masterpieces, including Monet and Renoir, illuminated manuscripts to Renaissance sculpture, rare coins to Asian arts. Kettle's Yard is the University of Cambridge's modern and contemporary art gallery. It was home in the mid 20th century to Jim and Helen Ead, who were collectors and friends to many artists. Collections include works by Alfred Wallace, Ben Nicholson and many more. The Polar Museum has over 5,000 objects from penguins to paintings, sleeping bags to sextants, Inuit art to explorers' diaries. And on the slide, you can see the snow goggles used by Ernest Shackleton on the Imperial Transantarctic Expedition in 1914. The Sedgwick Museum is the university's oldest museum, dating back to its founding collection from Dr. John Woodward. It's a 4.4 billion year journey through time of fossils, of animals and plants. As well as dinosaurs, the museum has several ichthyosaurs collected by the Dorset fossilist, Mary Anning, which was sold to the seventh Woodwardian professor, Adam Sedgwick, after whom the current museum built in 1904 is named. At the Whipple Museum of the History of Science, you can discover a vast array of scientific instruments dating from the Middle Ages to the present day, including Charles Darwin's microscope. He purchased this to process samples he collected on the HMS Beagle. 
On the slide, you can see some pocket-sized globes measuring three inches in diameter. These had several functions, including acting as status symbols for gentlemen and educational tools for children. The Museum of Zoology has over 2 million zoological specimens. It's a great place to discover stories of extinction, survival, evolution and exploration. It also houses Cambridge's largest resident, the 21 metre fin whale, and has one of the most complete dodo skeletons in the UK. For more information about the collections, please visit the UCM website, which will provide you with more information about visiting times and access arrangements. YouTube videos and links to the museum's own web pages. Alongside the objects, many of the museums hold documentary heritage, field notes, correspondence, maps, plans, books and other documents, which reveal how Cambridge scholars and many others set out to understand the world around them. Each of the museums are managed and funded quite differently, so they are naturally at very different stages of their archive journey. However, they would all welcome inquiries about using their archive collections. The Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology's archive relates to its collections as well as to the history of the museum itself. Much of the archive relates to important artifacts, which are often impossible to understand without access to the relevant contemporary records. Among the archives are excavation notebooks and site plans. And here on the slide, you can see some wonderful watercolours by Mrs Webb, whose husband, Reverend Dr. Webb, excavated a Roman burial ground. The museum also holds over 220,000 photographic objects, and this is one of the largest and most significant anthropology and archaeology collections in Britain. The Botanic Garden Archive includes about 1,200 manuscripts and objects. These include maps, including the original watercolour map of the garden from 1834, Aerial photographs, artwork, garden design and landscape models, letters, minutes of meetings, seed catalogues and historical books that record the accessioning of plants into the collections. The Quarry Library is home to the garden's printed collections and houses around 7,000 books and over 50 periodical titles, both historic and current. The Sainsbury Laboratory at the Botanic Garden includes over 14,000 specimens of Cambridge University Botanic Garden Herbarium, as well as over 1 million specimens that comprise the herbarium of the University of Cambridge. This includes Charles Darwin's plants from the Beagle Voyage. Approximately 2,400 plants are mounted on 954 sheets. The Museum of Classical Archaeology is home to several collections of archival material, ranging from London slides and turn of the century photographic collections to archaeological notebooks and site plans. The collections also include squeezes, 5,000 paper squeezes or paper imprints of Greek and Roman inscriptions. The Bean Archive is the archive of George E. Bean, who was a topographer and epigraphist of classical Turkey. The suitcase you can see on the slide contains over 3,000 photographs and negatives, and each of the photographs have been digitised along with accompanying documents. The Faculty of Classical Archaeology also has an archive, including the Mycenae Excavation and Publication Archive, documenting British excavations between 1920 and 1969. Digital Mycenae showcases the notebooks, drawings, plans and photographs from the 1920 to 57 excavation era, and this was launched on the Cambridge Digital Library in June 2020. The Fitzwilliam Museum has accumulated a remarkable collection of archives detailing the lives of preeminent figures in cultural and scientific history from the 17th to the 20th century. The artist Edward Byrne Jones's archive includes correspondence with major figures, including Dante Gabriel Rossetti and John Ruskin, notebooks from his student years at Oxford, and his account books with Morris and Co. The Fitzwilliam includes correspondence of Samuel Palmer, who was a British landscape painter, etcher, and printmaker. He was also a prolific writer. In 1942, Leonard Wolfe gave the Fitzwilliam Museum drafts of what became Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. 
At Kettle Surge, you can find Jim Ede's personal papers, which formed part of his gift to the University of Cambridge in 1966. This includes correspondence not just with artist friends, but other notable figures such as T. Lawrence and the development of Kettle's Yard and its collections. Here you can see a poster from Jim advertising the student picture loan scheme, which is still available to this day, open to full-time students at both Anglia Ruskin University and the University of Cambridge. The archive also includes a number of collections related to Kessel's Yard and its artists. The Thomas Manning Polar Archive holds one of the largest collections of manuscript and other unpublished material relating to British activity in the Arctic and Antarctic regions and to many persons who've lived and worked there. Here you can see a variety of records, newspapers, maps and diary entries, including the last made entry by Ernest Shackleton in 1912. Also at Spry is the Picture Library, which is one of the world's most comprehensive collection of historical photographs of the polar region, no numbering at around 20,000 images. The Sedgwick Museum Archive contains over 2,000 boxes of irreplaceable records. The archive includes the Institutional Archive or Business Archive, which includes administrative and collections management records. The University Library in Cambridge also has Sedgwick Museum records too. There are records of individuals, many of whom are associated with the objects in the museum itself, and papers of Woodwardian professors and museum curators. The records of geologists, petrologists, paleontologists and mineralogists whose specimen collections are on display in the museum or in the stores also feature. The museum also has the records of the Sedgwick Club, which is the oldest student geological club in the world. As well as this, there's a lot of expedition records, in particular the Cambridge Svalbard Exploration Collection, which covers expeditions from 1949 to the 1990s. The archive also includes accumulated records, art collections, including paintings and sculpture. There are talks on YouTube about the Sedgwick Club and Svalbard archives if you want to know more about these particular collections. The Whipple Museum of the History of Science's archive is mostly institutional with some trade literature. The archive includes an extensive collection of John Stevens Henslow, who was professor of botany at the University of Cambridge for 36 years. The archive includes the teaching charts that Henslow prepared to illustrate his popular lectures. And you can see an example on the slide showing the tiny details of a maidenhair fern and was created with the help of a powerful microscope. The Museum of Zoology's histories contain correspondence and documentation relating to the acquisition and use of the collections from 1819 to 1911. There are museum object catalogues for eggs, insects, shells, butterflies and beetles. There's also the papers and manuscripts of Hugh E. Strickland, who was an ornithologist, as well as the entomological notebooks and letters of Francis John Henry Jenkinson, who was curator of insects at the University Museum. He was also Cambridge University librarian from 1890 to 1923. The archive also includes photographic material and 19th century teaching charts. So that is a very quick overview of some of UCM's archive collections, and I hope it provides some inspiration for your work. Please do contact the museums if you want to visit to undertake research. You will be made very welcome. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy History Day.